This is a very brief introduction to thermal chemistry, and this brief video will primarily introduce concepts and vocabulary that you need to be able to understand some of the calculations we get into later on. All right, so thermochemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with energy absorbed or released during a chemical change. One of the first things you need to be able to understand in talking about thermochemistry is the concept of energy. Energy is the ability to do work or transfer heat. So energy can be in the form of moving something, let's say, or heating something, one or the other, but they're both considered forms of energy. The units of energy that we'll be dealing with are primarily joules. And just to give you a brief idea of where that came from, I'm sure that you know that kinetic energy is a form of energy. It's the energy of motion. There is a formula for kinetic energy that we'll be using a little bit later in this unit. Um, it's kinetic energy equals one-half mass times velocity squared. And so when the units of energy first started to come around, they were based on calculations for kinetic energy. And so at that point, mass was used in kilograms and velocity was meters per second. And therefore, units for kinetic energy using the kinetic energy formula were kilograms per meter squared per second squared. And we have now since um, when we're dealing with heat primarily, um, have defined that a kilogram meter squared per second squared is simply a joule. And so this by far is the more co most common um, energy unit you'll be using. There are some other units of energy that you need to be familiar with. A calorie is an older unit, uh, abbreviated CAL. It is not the same as the calories we look and think about when we're eating food or trying to burn off fat. Um, calorie um, with a small c, lowercase c, is defined as the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. You will also see kilocalorie and just like any other kilo unit it means whatever the base unit is, in this case calorie, okay, times 1,000. And so kilocalorie you will see. I wanted to put in writing here to remind you that food calories do not equal energy calories. So there is a calorie with a capital C, and that is the food calories. And then a calorie, the more common that we'll be using here to measure energy, is calories with a little c. Just to let you know that food calories with a capital C are small calories, lowercase calories times a thousand. In other words, food calories are equal to kilocalories. If that confuses you, don't worry too much, but I just, it's kind of a curiosity thing. So how does a calorie relate to a joule? Well, one calorie is 4.184 joules. That's kind of a good conversion to remember and it'll make more sense why it's good to remember later on. All right, <clears throat> one of the first things that you need to understand in studying thermochemistry is the first law of thermodynamics. There are three laws and in this unit we will primarily focus on the first law which says energy is conserved basically. Uh, the fancy textbook language is energy is neither created nor destroyed. And basically that's saying the same thing as energy is conserved at all times. You can't create energy out of nothing and you can't totally destroy energy. However, energy can be transferred to from one object to another and it can also be converted from one type of energy to another. I'm sure you've heard of con um, conversions of energy from potential energy to kinetic energy. You can also have things like um, thermal energy converted to 
uh, mechanical energy. There's also electrical energy. So there's all different forms of energy, and the different forms can be converted back and forth. But the thing to remember is, according to the first law of thermodynamics, the total energy of the universe is a constant. One specific and probably the more common example of conversion of energy is if you're sitting at the top of a hill, you have potential energy because you can potentially um, gain energy just by moving your position. And so as you start to go down the hill, you are converting your potential energy to kinetic energy. Another example that's a little bit more appropriate in thermochemistry is, let's see, bond energy, the energy contained within chemical bonds, is a form of potential energy. Okay, And that's also referred to as chemical energy. Chemical energy is a type of potential energy. Okay. So when we mess with chemical bonds, sometimes we can convert that potential energy into thermal energy. So there's just all, all sorts of types of energy conversions that can go on. The most common type of energy transfer, and one that we'll be focusing on in this unit, is the transfer of heat. Now, it's important to understand that heat itself is not energy. That's kind of nitpicking, but the definition of heat is the transfer of energy. So it's not really energy itself. It's the transfer of energy. It's important to understand that heat always flows from a warmer object to a cooler object. So if you put your hand on an ice cube, it is incorrect to say that the ice cube is cooling your hand. The more proper way to state that is that the heat from your hand is flowing into the ice cube, and that's making your hand feel cold. So you just have to kind of be careful how you phrase things. Phrase it in such a way that demonstrates the movement of heat from the warmer object to the cooler object. All right, um, one final definition is in thermochemistry, you will hear us referring to a system and the surroundings. The system is anything you want to study. Typically in thermochemistry, it's a bunch of molecules or a chemical reaction. So this would be your system. The surroundings is anything around those molecules or the chemical reaction that can potentially interact with the system and exchange energy or heat with it. So everything in red here is the surroundings. We almost always talk from the perspective of the system. We are most interested in the system, the molecules, the chemical reaction, so we will, we will almost always present pro problems from the perspective of the system. All right, so one last thing, it's important to understand the difference between heat and temperature. They are not the same thing. They're vastly different. Heat is the exchange or transfer of energy. Temperature is a measure of the thermal energy or the kinetic energy of a system. I don't know if you remember from the last unit, the temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. So when you measure the temperature, you're also getting a direct read on the kinetic energy on a molecular scale of the molecules. So temperature is really just a reading of the amount of thermal energy. Heat refers to the exchange or transfer of the energy. Heat will always flow from a warmer substance to a cooler substance until both substances are at the exact same temperature. That is called thermal equilibrium. There are some energy diagrams that we will begin to use that you need to get familiar with. And quite often a system chemical reaction will be plotted <clears throat> as a function of the energy of the reactants and products. 
instance, I want you to get familiar with being able to interpret and actually draw these diagrams. So energy goes up, okay, and the first thing to do usually is to compare the energy of the reactants versus the energy of the products. Sometimes we'll have the situation where the energy of the products is higher, okay, so in order for reactants to reach products, they need to absorb energy. And you, I think most of you probably already know this, is that when a system absorbs energy from the surroundings, that process is called endothermic. So when you see endothermic, you should think of absorb. Okay. And the mathematical sign associated with that when we talk about energy, the change in energy for an endothermic process has a positive sign. Okay, These values are always greater than zero. Let's look at the reverse of that. Let's look at a situation where the reactants are higher energy than the products. So in order to go from reactants to products, what do we do with all of this excess energy that has been given off? It's given out to the surroundings. And so when a system releases energy to the surroundings, that process is called exothermic. The mathematical convention for exothermic processes, when you're talking about change in energy, the delta E or change in energy values will always be negative. So if you see a negative sign in front of a number, that means that it is an exothermic process. And that is it, a short introduction to thermochemistry. And the next pre-recorded lecture will be about calorimetry.